This video goes over finding the equations of quadratic functions. And we're looking at quadratic functions in terms of families. So first off, a couple things that you already know. When the equation is written in standard form, which is here, you know that the y-intercept of the graph is 0c, and the equation of the axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. When the equation is written in vertex form, which is here, the vertex is going to be hk. When the equation is written in factored form, the graph is going to cross the x-axis at s0 and t0, and the axis of symmetry will be at x equals s plus t over 2. So if we're trying to determine the equation, we need to figure out where we're going to start. If you're given the x-intercepts, start with the equation in factored form. If you're given the vertex, you can start with the equation in vertex form. And what we're going to do is use our equation to figure out our parameter a that is always at the front. If you notice here, uh, really in transformation terms, represents our vertical stretch factor. So in this example, a parabola has zeros at minus 2, 0, and 4, 0. Find the equation of the parabola that has a y-intercept at 0 minus 16. I see that I have my x-intercepts, so I know that I'm going to start in factored form. So my factored form for this equation is f at x equals a x plus 2. Remember, I'm subtracting my s value. And then I'm going to have x minus 4. Now, the piece that I'm missing is a. That's the part I don't know. The f at x is okay to be unknown in the equation, as is my are my two x's. In order to find a, what I'm going to do is substitute in the point that I know, 0 minus 16. And I'm going to solve for a. So I've got 0 plus 2, 0 minus 4. This is going to give me minus 16 equals minus 8a a equals 2. And then I can write my equation. Oops, I'll use f at x. f at x equals 2 x plus 2 x minus 4. In b, we're going to do another equation. So same zeros, but passes through a different point. So we're going to start off the same way. f at x equals a x plus 2, x minus 4, and then we're going to substitute in our point that we're given, x and y. a, 1 plus 2, 1 minus 4. This is going to give us, let's see, 3 times minus 3 is minus 9a, so a equals 8 over 9, and then we can write our equation as f at x equals 8 over 9, x plus 2, x minus 4. So these are two equations that go through the same, two functions that go through the same set of x-intercepts. And quadratics that have the same zeros are said to be in the same family of functions. There are an infinite number of quadratic functions in every family because a can be any real number other than zero. So let's do another example here where we're going to start in vertex form. A quadratic function has a vertex of 6, 3, so this is your clue to start in vertex form, and a y-intercept at 0, minus 15. So we're going to find the equation of this function in standard form. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with my equation in vertex form, let's see, squared plus 3. The next thing that I'm going to do is sub in my point. Okay, So we'll state my equation. Then I'm going to sub in my point. So minus 15a, 0 minus x squared plus 3. Minus 15, let's see, 36a plus 3. I've got minus 18 
equals 36a. And so that means a is going to equal, um, let's see here, a is going to equal 18 over 36, which is going to be minus a half. So now I'm going to state my equation with my a value. So I've got y equals minus 1 half x minus 6 squared plus 6. And then the last thing I'm going to do is put in, we'll say, appropriate form or the requested form in here. Uh, so for me, they've requested a standard form here, or I've asked you to put in standard form uh, of the equation here, which is going to uh, require us to expand. So remember that standard form is going to be f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So let's expand that right-hand side. So we've got 1 half x squared minus 12x plus 36 plus 3. And then I've got y equals minus a half x squared plus 6x minus 18 plus 3. And then I've got y equals 1 half x squared plus 6x minus 15. And there is my final equation in standard form. So we are going to do one last example here, which is a little bit more of a problem solving question. And what we're going to need to do is to find the equation of a quadratic function that passes through the points minus 2, 9, 2, minus 7, and 4, minus 3. So right now, I don't really know anything about my function. I do know that I'm probably going to start in standard form. And so I'm just going to write the standard form of my equations using what I know. So I'm going to get three equations here. So using my first point, I've got 9 equals a x squared plus b x plus c. My second equation with my second point, I've got minus 7 equals a x squared plus b x plus c. And then my third equation is going to be 3 equals a x squared plus b x plus c. So let's just simplify those so that they look a little bit simpler. So this is still my equation 1. I've got equation 2. Uh, and then I've got, last but not least, equation 3. So if I have two equations and two unknowns, you know that I can use a substitution or elimination and move forward from there. Now because I have three equations and three unknowns, I'm going to have to work on putting those two equations together, so probably the first two, and then I'm going to take a look at putting the first one and the third one together to see if I can eliminate some variables. So let's start off with equation 1 and equation 2. And when I write them underneath each other like this, what I see is that if I take away equation 2 from equation 1, I'm going to end up eliminating A and C at the same time. So now I can actually solve for B. I find that B is equal to minus 4. So now what we can take a look at, well, let's see if we use equation 2 and equation 3 and see if we can do something similar. So I've got equation 2 and equation 3. 16a plus 4b plus c. And what could I eliminate here? 
Well, let's try and eliminate B, and then we can get C in terms of A. So if I multiply uh, this equation by 2, I'm now going to get minus 14 equals 8A plus 4B plus 2C. And then I can subtract my second equation from that. So I've got 16A plus 4B plus C. And now I'm going to do equation 2 minus equation 3. So I've got minus 17 minus 8A. I've eliminated this here, and I've got plus C left over. And then I'm going to end up with C equals minus 17 plus 8A, which doesn't seem that great until I realize that I can actually sub C equals minus 17 plus 8A and B equals minus 4. Let's go into equation 1. Really, you can choose any equation you want to. I just happen to choose equation 1 minus 2 times minus 4 plus minus 17 plus 8a. So now I'm going to do a little bit of simplification here. So plus 8, I've got minus 17 plus 8a. And then what I'm going to end up with is that I've got 12a on my left-hand side. And I've got 9 take away 8 plus 17 on my left-hand side, which is going to give me that A equals 18 over 12, which is going to be the same as 3 over 2. So now that I have my A value, I'm going to take that and I'm going to sub it back into C. Uh, so not subbing C, we're going to sub A. We're going to sub A equals 3 over 2 into C. Uh, and then we get C equals minus 17 plus 8A. C equals minus 17 plus 8 times 3 halves. So we're going to end up with C equals minus 12. So therefore... I can write my equation as 3 over 2 x squared plus, what was b? b was minus 4 x minus 5. So there's lots of different ways to do this type of question, and you might have to do some different rearranging or combining of the equations. There's more than one way to do this question for sure. Um, the math is always there as you're working through it. You just need to be patient, continue creating new equations from what you have until you're able to eliminate your appropriate variables.